God bless you for watching. Feel free to sh share this video. Invite somebody. And they'll be blessed. My trust is in you. I am that I am. Is in you. Lead it off the fire. Just worship the Lord wherever you are. I put my trust in you. My trust is in you. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. How are you all doing today? God bless you for watching. Feel free to share this video. Invite somebody to watch and they'll be blessed. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. He see can do. Is in you. Just worship the Lord wherever you are. Oh, ye give a bow. God bless you all. My trust is in you. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, yes, love. Share this video. Invite somebody. I'm trying to share it, too. It's in you. Somebody needs to hear this so they can be blessed. My trust is in you. Hey. My trust is in you. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord. I love this song. My trust is in you. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. My trust is in you. I put them all in you, Lord. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you. So I have um I have a message. I had I know I'd come online earlier and we did deliverance for let me lower this song a little bit. Let me lower it a little bit. I was online a few hours ago and I came to do deliverance for people that are suffering from um Sexual sin, loss, masturbation, spiritual husband, spiritual wife. And that was a very powerful video. A lot of people got delivered. If you did not watch it, go to my wall after this video and watch it. The devil tried so hard to end that video. It was, it was just one powerful video. You could tell that there were a lot of people that needed to watch it to be delivered. And you know, God prevailed. The video was done, but guess what happened? At the end of the video, I tried going back to watch it. And after one hour, there was no sound anymore on it. Did you guys experience that? Like it was for two hours. The first one hour had sound. After one hour, there was no sound. <laughs> and that's when the deliverance started. There was no sound. <laughs> the devil was mad though. <laughs> but while they were watching it online, they could hear me. When I was live, but after the video was over, there was no sound. After one hour, but what I did was I went to my, I went to my um, my laptop to watch it, and there was sound throughout the whole thing. So if you want to watch it, you can go back and watch it. Um, but use your laptop to watch it, or your your 
your um, computer. It's powerful. It has a strong anointing in that video. Some people were sending me messages. Somebody even sent me a video of what when had what ha what was happening to her when deliverance was taking place. She was um she was hissing like a snake, and she started spitting, spitting. She was like serpentine kind of spirit was leaving her. She did a video for like five minutes video right after the the video, and I watched it. It was powerful. A lot of people were shaking, vomiting, falling on the floor. And I know a lot of power left me after that video. But I'm back. I was kind of tired early. I wanted to go to sleep. But the Spirit of God kept telling me to talk about this topic, fear. It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. It kept coming and coming and coming and coming. I was like, okay, I'll just do it tomorrow. It said, no, do it today. I even went on Facebook. I went on my cousin's page. I was looking at one of his videos. The first thing that came out of his mouth is, fear not, I am with thee. I was like, oh, Lord. And then it's like everything I was looking at had something with fear in it. So you know when the Spirit of God wants you to do something. Meaning there are some people here that really need this message. There are some people here that need deliverance, that are always afraid. So we're going to do deliverance on you today. The Spirit of God said, I need to talk about this. And he started teaching me a lot about fear. God bless you all. Make sure you share this video. Invite somebody. You know, invite somebody. Even some people that you don't think will be afraid. They're afraid. Trust me. There are some people that you would not think will be afraid, but they're afraid. And it's not necessarily being afraid of the dark. It could be afraid of the unknown afraid of your, your what, what, what will happen tomorrow if you will be able to pay your bills afraid of so many different fear comes in different forms okay it's not oh i'm afraid of the dark that's not the only kind of fear there's kind of different kind of fear there's just different kind of fear afraid of failure you know you're afraid to do something because you don't know if you will succeed it's just different forms of fear you know and i know some of you are going through stuff like that some of you you can't even stay in your house alone. <laughs> you're always scared. It's like you're hearing voices or you're seeing things. Some of you, you are afraid to even close your eyes to sleep. Because anytime you sleep, it's like you're having nightmares or people are chasing you. Some of you, you are afraid of dating or afraid of trying to get married. Because maybe you've married before and your last marriage was terrible. Maybe the, your husband or your wife was abusing you. And now you're just afraid to marry again. Some of you, you are afraid of how you're going to pay your rent this month because last month maybe you lost your job and you're like, oh my God, another month is coming. What will I do? I'm just afraid. How will I pay this bill? You know what I mean? Like there's so many different kinds of fear, you know, just different kind of fear. Some people are just afraid and they don't know why they're afraid. They're just afraid of the unknown, you know, like it's fear. And that's something that the devil uses to hold people down <laughs> fear the spirit of fear it's 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 like a common thing like the, the video i did before thousands of people were going through that issue of sexual sin masturbation lost and all that but this one this fear this is even more common than that one starting from children to adults there's always this fear of something fear of losing your job fear of something just fear of the unknown Fear, 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 fear of being rejected, just fear generally. And we're not supposed to be afraid. And the Spirit of God kept telling me, He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's the scripture that kept coming. It kept coming and coming and coming. I'm telling you, I was trying to really wait till tomorrow to do this. But my body became on fire. Even right now as I'm talking to you, like fire is coming out of my eyes. The fire was coming through every part of my body. And now my eyes, like, like fire is oozing out of my eyes. So tell you that he wants me to talk about this today. And the network has not been strong because, the, you know, there's a, there was hurricane in Houston and storm. And a lot of people don't have power. Then some people, their network providers are not working it's still flooded in a lot of places so it's really affecting the network 
So to tell you how badly he wanted me to do this video, I have to go sit close to my router. <laughs> to the router so that I will have strong network. You know, when God wants you to give a message, you have to give it. Because there's somebody that needs this message. So the first scripture that I'm going to cover here is the popular one that everybody knows. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. It says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, but of love, and of a sound mind. Whenever you think about the Holy Spirit, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Power. It's like power. Even when it says, he has given us power to tread upon serpents. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we didn't have that power. Remember with, in the Bible, the apostles, they didn't have power until they got filled with the Holy Ghost. So the kind of spirit that God gives us, fear is not part of it. So if you say you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you still have fear, something is not right. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind uh, sound mind to think properly to know that you are not meant to be afraid that to know that you're not supposed to worry about not paying your bill or something you're not supposed to worry about quitting or getting qu uh, getting fired at your job you're not supposed to worry about being rejected somewhere no sound mind so you can think well so you can think well no spirit of fear how can fear and power work together people that have power they're not afraid people that are in power they're not afraid because they got power they can do whatever they want with the power so they're not afraid of anybody so if you have that spirit of power in you and you are still afraid something is not right then maybe you don't have the spirit of power yet. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's say you are given power to do... To, okay, if you read Luke 10, 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power, which is the Holy Spirit, power to tread on serpents and scorpions. He says, I have given you authority, boldness, power. Go and tread on that serpent and scorpion. If you have fear, there is no... No way you can tread upon serpents and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you meaning you should not be afraid because i have given you power over those people over those things that are making you afraid does that make sense like anybody that has fear cannot tread upon no serpents and no scorpions anybody that has fear they will see the serpent and scorpions and they'll be like, no, no, please, oh, I'm afraid of it, oh, I don't want, do you see what I'm saying? These two don't work together. You are either destroying it because you have power, or you're running away from it because you have fear. Do you see what I'm saying? So you can't say you have power and you are still afraid. Something is not right. <laughs> Something is not right. God bless you, Andrea, for posting it. I'm going to pin that scripture. It says, Behold, I give unto you power, not fear. I give you power to tread on serpents, to tread on that spirit of fear, <laughs> to tread on the devil and his agents, to tread on that witch that is always threatening your life, that is making you afraid. It says, and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, all includes every kind of evil spirit. Spirit of fear, spirit of whatever. You have been given that power. They have promoted you to a status. You are like the general of everything to destroy anything beneath you. So why would you be afraid? Like you are like the commander now. Because power has been given unto you. But the devil knows that the way that he can strip you of that power is by making you afraid. <laughs> see he knows what he's doing the moment he sees he can't strip you of the power the first thing he does is by putting fear in you before you know it you that is supposed to be powerful you are afraid he he and before you know as you're afraid instead of using the power 
You are running from the thing that you are supposed to destroy with the power that has been given to you. And that thing will chase after you. That thing will destroy you. The devil knows what he is. <laughs> he knows what he is doing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to read. I'm going to read a scripture for you guys. I'm going to read a scripture for you guys. I'm going to read Matthew 14 verse 20, verse 22. I'll go down a little bit. Verse 22 down. It says, and, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went into a, a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea. His disciples were already in the ship. Tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary. That was heavy wind. And in the fourth watch of the night. Jesus went unto them. Walking on the sea. Because the disciples were already sailing. He was praying alone. And you know the wind was not acting right. You know. It was kind of, a, kind of like a stormy day or whatever. And Jesus said you know what. Let me just walk on the sea because I'm Jesus and I got the power to walk on the sea. <laughs> Let me walk on the sea and go meet them. <laughs> so he said, and he says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit. Oh my God, that's a ghost. That's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Once they saw him, they were afraid. Hey, we're going to die today. Oh, look at water spirit on the water walking. In fact, let me ask all of you this question. You know me, I like to play with you guys. Assuming you were the ones in that boat. <laughs> at the night time like that, night time. And it was already windy and all this and all that. And suddenly you see somebody. <laughs> Walking on water, <laughs> approaching where the boat is. What would you do? Just be truthful. Just be truthful. It's not even daytime where you can see the face of the person. Nighttime, you see somebody walking on, on not swimming. Swimming, you can understand. Maybe somebody drowned. Walking on water. What would you do? <laughs> Some of you, eh? <laughs> you will start saying your last prayer. <laughs> Somebody say I will run. Where are you gonna run to? You are in the water already. <laughs> You're already in in the boat. Where are you gonna run to? You're gonna run inside the water. Away. <laughs> Just think about it. They say they were afraid. They say it's a spirit, and they cried out because this Jesus had never walked on water when he was with them. This is the first time, and they did not know he even had that kind of power to walk on water because he's never. He's never displayed that power. You know, he's only been healing people, lay hands. So they don't even think it was Jesus. All they know is they saw somebody walking on the water. <laughs> somebody said they was. <laughs> Tanya said, I will dive into that sea. <laughs> fear will make you dive into the sea. And you can't kill yourself <laughs> because of fear. Do you see your answer? Your answer is exactly what I'm talking about. The devil puts fear in you so you can endanger yourself. So you can kill yourself on your own. How can you dive into that sea that is so deep because you are afraid of ghosts that you saw or somebody you saw? Can't you see? You will use your own hand to go kill yourself because of fear. That's what the devil does. Do that. He will not be like he's the one that did it. But he did that to you. And you did not think because you didn't have sound mind to think at that time. So all you did was fear came and you just immediately acted. Boom. You ran in. You jump into the water. Boom. You did not even think of how you would swim. You were not thinking. You didn't have sound mind. You just saw this person on the water. And you. Were, the first thing you thought of was fear. The next thing is, oh, run, run. You enter water. Without thinking. Without thinking first. No sound mind. When there's fear, there's no sound mind. But when there's power, there is sound mind. Because you have power. You can decide. You can, you can pause a little bit and think and say, wait, wait. 
Why am I going to deal with this one? What will I do to this one? But when you have fear, you can't think. You're looking to hide. You're running for cover. Before you know it, you carry yourself and jump into fire or jump into danger on your own because you were running. Sometimes people are running and they don't know what they are running from. <laughs> do you know some people are so afraid? They see people running without asking them questions. You just see a lot of people running. Instead of you to say, why are you guys running? They don't ask because they are afraid. They will follow them and run. They don't know if those people running are mad people. They will follow them and run. Boom. They will run for almost 30 minutes before they will now ask, what are we even running from? All of them will say, I don't know. I just saw people running. I started following them. <laughs> but if you have power and you have sound mind, before you join that crowd to run, you will be like, what are we running from? Is it something that I can face? Face to face and deal with it? Why would I run? Let me know what I'm running from first before I begin to follow you. I'm not going to run blindly because I have sound mind. I need to think about what I'm running from before I start to run into danger. How am I sure that where I'm running to is safe? Do you understand? How am I sure that the place I'm running to is a good place to run to? I need to know what I'm doing because I have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the enemy. So I can't be running like that. I need to know exactly what we're running from before I run. <laughs> but if you're afraid, all you see is a lot of people, hey, let us join them. Oh, we don't know the world is ending. Boom. You run, 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 run. You don't know if they're just doing um, exercise and they're all trying to run for 30 minutes to lose weight. You will join them and run. When they finish, they will start shaking themselves. You're like, so why are we running? You say, oh, we're just doing exercise. You, wanna... <laughs> you will be so mad. Eh? You say, so it's exercise you are doing that. Me, I was following you to run like this. <laughs> you start to even cause themselves. <laughs> so be careful before you, you think. Sound mind. Think well before you, you, you react. Don't let fear make you do things that you will look stupid. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes you are afraid of something and do you know the thing you are afraid of is also afraid of you. Think about it. That thing that you are afraid of is also afraid of you. When you see a snake and you are afraid of it, you want to kill it. The snake too is afraid of you. He said wants to kill you. Two of you are afraid of each other. You don't understand. That thing that you are afraid of, that thing is also afraid of you. But when the thing sees you running, it has an upper hand. It has an upper hand, it will start to chase you. You will say, okay, good, I'm winning here. But if you don't run from it, hey, the thing is scared. You don't know. <laughs> oh my God. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. They cried out because they were afraid. Remember then, they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. It was only Jesus that had the Holy Ghost. Jesus with them. They did not have the Holy Ghost. So they still had the spirit of fear walking in them. But straightway, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Oh, Jesus always likes to assure people that they should not be afraid. He will always tell people, don't be afraid. Because he knows that's what the devil uses to get people. He said, be of good cheer, like, be of good conduct. Stop crying like babies. It is I. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. It is me. Come on, guys. You are grown up men. Stop crying like a crybaby. It is me. <laughs> and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, meaning he's still not sure. If it is you for sure, for sure, bid me come unto thee on the water. If this is really you, like you say, Lord, because they couldn't see him. He was far from them. They couldn't see. He was far from them. They could just see a shadow. He said, if it is you, bid me come unto thee on the water. If it's really you. See, he had boldness though. Because you know, some of you, you don't care whether it's him or it's not him. <laughs> you ain't going on that order. <laughs> some of you, even if you know that it's Jesus, <laughs> you are not trying that thing. You know. <laughs> Just be truthful. Oh. Let's be truthful here. Yeah. If you guys, some of you, if you know that that was Jesus, even though he has told you, fear not. It is I. 
Would you go and I want her to go and meet you? <laughs> you don't okay if it's you. Start coming and start coming. We're waiting for you. <laughs> Jesus, we're waiting for you. Start coming. <laughs> You're not going to say, okay, let me come and see. See, waiting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will wait for you to come. We're waiting for you on the boat. <laughs> Some of you, you know what I'm saying. That. You will not climb that water and say, let me come and see if it's you. Why? See, Americans, you know, they will come and... You know, they may come and see if it's you. But African people, my brothers and sisters, they are not coming nowhere. <laughs> they so okay, we know it's you. We are waiting for you. Start coming. Start coming. <laughs> we are here in the boat waiting. Start coming. Quick, quick. <laughs> but for me, I'm not coming to meet you. You know, you know that's what you will do. You're not going to leave that boat. You say, okay, now, Jesus, I believe that is you. No problem. I, I truly believe you. Start coming. We're waiting. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my people will say, eh, 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 I don't want to die because I have children. <laughs> I have bills. I have family. <laughs> I cannot die like this. <laughs> said if it be thou bid me come unto the unto thee on the water and he said come see i love jesus he said okay you want to come come oh jesus 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 is so peaceful he said come with authority come <laughs> you know jesus doesn't really shout like that i'm sure you would have said come peacefully <laughs> I won't lie if I was in that boat Even if Jesus announced it with trumpet Come I was like, eh, eh, bro <laughs> I know they come, don't worry I will wait for you here <laughs> I'm just telling you what me I will do Everybody just be truthful to yourself <laughs> I will say no problem sir just, just I will wait for you, come <laughs> And he said, come And when Peter was come down Out of the ship because Jesus had given him that power to come, that authority, that command. He told him, come. And Peter was come down out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Because he had received power from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He told him, come. The master of the sea. He said, come. And that gave him boldness. He just got on without even thinking. He didn't think. He just got into the water and started walking. Do you understand what I'm, I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody said, I will not come. That's right. <laughs> you guys tell the truth. Oh, I shame the devil. You know you won't go there. You know sometimes when you read this Bible, you have to apply it to yourself to know the kind of boldness that person had. So he just said, and Peter answered him and said, no, no. And he said, come. And when Peter had come down of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. At that time, there was no fear because his eyes were on Jesus. He focused on Jesus. He believed Jesus when he said he should come. He believed that he had given the power to go. And he didn't even think of fear at that time. He stepped on that water. But when he saw the wind boy stereos <laughs> when he was looking at jesus and focusing on jesus and going to jesus he now saw the wind he now removed his eyes from jesus and now look at the wind guess what he made a mistake if he had focused on jesus he would not show where he said and he saw the wind because he won't see no wind. He would just be seeing Jesus, the one that asked him to come. But he removed his eyes from Jesus. He got distracted because of the wind. That's what the devil does. He uses distraction. He uses distraction to scare people. And before you know, things bad things start to happen. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He did not, he wasn't afraid when he first climbed on top of the water when Jesus told him to come. He was afraid after he had seen the wind, how serious it was. He was afraid when he was shaken by the devil. 
He was afraid the moment he removed his eyes from Jesus. That's why I keep saying focus on Jesus. Don't be distracted because distractions is where fear starts. He says, well, when he saw the wind boy stereos, he was afraid and beginning to sink. The moment fear came into his heart, he started to sink. He did not sink when he first climbed that water because he had power and he was focusing on Jesus. But the moment he removed his eyes from Jesus and he started looking at the wind, the distraction, he began to sink. Are you guys getting what I'm saying here? Some of you, the moment the devil traps you with fear, instead of going higher, you are going down. You are sinking. You can't go higher unless that spirit of fear is cast out of you. You don't understand. He knows how far you can go when you keep your eyes on Jesus. So he is going to distract you with fear. So you can start to sink. <laughs> he says, but when he saw the wind, boy, stereos, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried. Saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Because I got distracted. And I looked away from you, Lord. And now I'm sinking, Lord. Because of fear. The power that you gave me. I didn't trust this power. I got carried away. And now I'm sinking, Lord save me oh and immediately jesus okay let me tell you what happened in fact let me read this part 31 it says and immediately jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him when he was starting to sink and said unto him oh thou of little faith i gave you power you of little faith Wherefore didst thou doubt? Why did you doubt the power and the authority that I gave you to walk on this water? Why did you doubt? Why? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. When they had come into the ship, the wind ceased. The whole wind was there because they knew Jesus was coming. The moment they got to into the ship it ceased can you see that devil will be shaking things in your life because he knows your breakthrough is about to happen <laughs> your breakthrough is about to happen so the wind will be the whole thing will be becoming so worse it's like i can't take this no more but you're almost there then they, they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying of a true doubt at the son of God. Now I want to tell you something. When Peter. And the disciples saw Jesus. They didn't recognize that he was Jesus. And that's why they were afraid. Because if they had recognized he was Jesus. They wouldn't be afraid. They would say oh it's Jesus. That means he was far from them. All they could see was a shadow right. And then when they called out. And he said don't be afraid it's me. He shouted. And then this Peter was like okay can I come on. He said yes come. So Peter had to walk from, say, from like a long distance, a little bit of a long distance. So he had power and faith and he was watching Jesus and he walked for like maybe 30 seconds or one minute. And he started to sink when he was almost close to Jesus. Because if Jesus was able to stretch forth his hand, immediately he started to sink, to grab him. That means he was already close to Jesus. Otherwise, he would not say, and immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand. For him to have done it immediately, that means he was close to him for him to be able to reach him. Meaning, he walked all the way that far. The moment he got close to where he was going, 
The moment he was getting close to his final destination. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you have tried and tried. You have been good and good and you've tried. You are almost there. Almost there. Like you can actually stretch your hand and touch it. That's when the devil just, boom, put something in there. <laughs> and before you know, you start to sink. Because he sees how close Jesus is. He, saw, he sees how close your breakthrough is. Because Jesus, have you, have you thought about it? At first, they could not recognize Jesus. And then suddenly, when he had walked that far to meet Jesus, right when he was a hand stretched away from Jesus, he started to sink. Do you understand? Like, he was already close to Jesus. He started to sink. And Jesus was able to stretch his hand and touch him, meaning he was already there. He had walked that far already. Sometimes when you're about to give up, your breakthrough is just around, it's just a few seconds away. So something will come and just put fear in you and put doubt in you. Doubt. He says, why did you doubt? Put fear. Put doubt in you. And guess what? You start to sink. And the devil is laughing because he sees your breakthrough like you can actually stretch your hand and touch your breakthrough. You've walked for a long time. You're almost there. And then fear makes you start to sink. Doubt makes you start to sink. This is not your portion in the name of Jesus. The devil had to distract him with the wind. The devil had to do something to distract him because he said, no, you must not read Jesus today. <laughs> I will make sure you don't read Jesus. Oh, yeah, make a noise. Make a big noise with the wind. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. And immediately he took his eyes from Jesus. He now looked. He was like, hey, hey, I will die. I will die. He that had the power to walk on that same sea became afraid of the sea that he was given power to walk on top. Can you imagine? You have been given power over something. Suddenly you are afraid of that something. That thing will come. That thing will eat you up. That's what happens. The water started to swallow him. He had power over that water. He was using that power well until he got afraid. And then the power, the water now had power over him. That problem, if you become afraid of it, it will have power over you. That sickness, if you become afraid of it, it will begin to swallow you. That situation, you are more powerful than it. The moment you start to fear it, the problem becomes more powerful than you. And it begins to swallow you. It begins to consume you. Even sickness in your body, you have power over that thing. But if you start being afraid, oh, they say I have this sickness, so I don't know what I will do. Oh, this sickness will kill me. Oh, hey, I don't know. This sickness is going to kill me. Oh, this sickness will kill you, all right? Because you've already given up. You've, been, you, you, you've already said, ah, I'm afraid this sickness will kill me. Oh. Now the sickness is going to have power over you. But if you reject that sickness, you rebuke that sickness because you have been given power over that sickness. That sickness will flee. That spirit that is responsible for that sickness will flee because it knows that you have power above it. You have power over it. But the moment he sees that you are afraid of it, oh, he's going to swallow you the same way the water was about to swallow Peter. <laughs> it would just swallow. If Jesus had not pulled his hand to pick him up, he would have drowned in that place. <laughs> he, will, he would have drowned in that place. He that was giving power over the sea suddenly lost the power because of fear god has given you power over all of these things even these demons that are scaring you god has given you power over them a few days ago the holy spirit was telling me to tell you guys that you are more powerful than you think don't be a crybaby like these people don't do that you are more powerful than you think him it was a direct command from jesus himself the Messiah himself, not another prophet, Jesus himself, told him to come. He worked with that power and then he started to drown. And another thing that the Holy Spirit was teaching me, 
that the first time that the, the word fear or afraid was ever used in the Bible was with Adam. In the book of Genesis chapter 3. When God had created man, when he had created Adam and Eve, there was nothing like fear. There was no sin. Everything was good. Everything was going good. No problem, no nothing. But the moment sin came into their life, that was when fear originated. To tell you that fear did not come from God. Fear came from the devil. So if you are afraid today, it is from the devil. It is not from God. I'm going to read a scripture for you. Actually going to start from Genesis 3 verse 1 so that you can get the story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then ye, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she became distracted, right? She became distracted. She saw that she's been seeing this tree. But suddenly, now she started seeing it in a different way. <laughs> she started, I would call it lusting after the tree. Like before she was seeing it the innocent way. But now she started seeing it another way. It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, all this while the tree was there. She didn't see it, right? <laughs> and that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Listen to this part. And the eyes of them both were opened. Sin started. Now their eyes were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves a prod. Meaning, oh, I love this scripture so much. When God created them, God was fine with them being naked. He didn't mind them being naked. <laughs> they didn't mind themselves being naked. So in other words, God did not see being naked as a sin. At that, like he didn't see it as anything. He was more concerned about their heart. Otherwise, he would have made clothes for them immediately. He created them. You, do you see what I'm saying? Like That's why I keep telling people that it's good for you to worry about your outside, but worry more about your inside. That's where God starts from. You know what I mean? Like he starts worrying about your heart. These people were naked. Oh, I want to preach on this, but don't worry. Next time I'll come again and preach on this topic. They were naked. Imagine people walking around naked and God did not say, let me show you. So I, I shall be for you. Let me show, um, Agbada for you. Let me show, um, um, something for you. He said, you were just fine the way you are. <laughs> Roam around naked. You don't have to hide nothing. Nobody looking at nothing. Everybody's innocent here. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves apron. They started making clothes. When they started sinning. And they heard the voice of the Lord God. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence. For the first time, they started to hide. Fear has stepped into their heart because they started to sin already. He says, and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They've never hid from God before. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? See, don't you think God knows where he was? <laughs> God knew where he was. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid. Oh, I kept hearing the scripture. The first time Adam used the word afraid. 
afraid. When God created him, there was nothing like fear. It was peaceful. Everything was fine. The moment the devil came in, the word fear started to come out of his mouth. Are you guys seeing what I'm saying? It says, I heard that voice in the garden and I was afraid. And God knows that fear is not a part of him. He knows that he didn't put fear in this man when he created this man. And why was he even afraid? Because I was naked and I hid myself. Can you imagine the silly excuse of him being afraid? I was afraid because I was naked. The God that created you, that has seen you naked, that has seen you and your wife naked, sees you all the time naked, that nakedness became something for you to be afraid of. That's why I say there's fear for different reasons. Fear of this, fear of stuff that don't even make sense. He sinned against God and instead of him to be afraid that he had disobeyed God, he was afraid for stupid reasons because he was naked. Can you imagine? But can you really imagine? I was afraid. I, well, you could have said I was afraid because I disappointed you. I disobeyed you. I ate what you told me not to eat. No, he wasn't afraid of that. He said, I was afraid because I'm naked. Afraid of the wrong, stupid reason. Like seriously, I have seen your nakedness a lot, Adam. I created you. Forgot? <laughs> I was the one that created you like this. So why are you afraid? Because you are naked. Sometimes the devil will start to mess with you. That he will make you to be afraid of stupid things. That by the time that spirit of fear leaves you. You will even be asking yourself. I can't believe I was even afraid of that. Me. Why was I even afraid of that thing? I can't believe I was afraid of that. You will even be making fun of yourself. You will be making fun of yourself. You are like. Shy. So you mean I've been afraid of these things all this while? Wow. Me. Why would I be afraid of that thing? I was afraid. Because I was naked. So I had to hide from you. Nakedness is not the sin that you committed, boo. The sin that you committed was the fact that you disobeyed God. And you ate something that he told you not to eat. He said the devil put some stupid fear in you. And it doesn't make sense. I'm sure if Adam goes back and think, he'll say, I wasn't afraid because I was naked. I was afraid because I didn't know what God would do to me. Like, at that time, he had no sound mind. There was no sound mind. He was not even thinking. He was just talking nonsense. There was no sound mind. Because if there was sound mind, he would not say, I was afraid because I was naked. Because that thing don't make no sense. You've been naked since he created you. <laughs> so why are you afraid today? Because the devil has put his seed inside of him. And the seed is fear. Every spirit of fear. Any kind of fear. Nakedness fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of death. Fear of um, nightmare. Fear of people. Fear of whatever crowd. Fear of whatever. People are, you'll be amazed. There's some kind of people, people are afraid of even, some people are even fear, afraid of ant. Ant. They see a lot of ants. Hey, I don't, I, I'm afraid of ant. I'm afraid of ant. They see roach. Oh, I'm afraid of 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 rain. Oh, I don't want the rain. I'm, like, there's so much kind of fear. You heard what Adam said. His own was fear of nakedness. <laughs> I was afraid because I was naked. You, would you be afraid because you're naked? To you, it will sound like, why would he be afraid of nakedness? That's how it sounds when you tell somebody what you are afraid of. That person will be like, why would you be afraid of the dark? I sleep with the light off. Why would you be afraid of the crowd? I can speak comfortably in front of people. So your own little fear that you think is little, to somebody it sounds dumb. Because they are not afraid of that thing you are afraid of. Why are you afraid of snakes? I kill snakes all the time. Why are you afraid of roaches? I kill roaches all the time. Why are you afraid of your bills? I'm not afraid of my bills. God always takes care of my bills. So your another man's fear is another man's like seriously you're afraid of that for real for real. That's how it feels when I'm reading this scripture right now. At that point to Adam it was a big deal that he was naked. He was afraid of it. But to me I'm reading it and I'm like seriously you're afraid of being naked like seriously. The devil when he wants to mess with you. 
it will just put unnecessary fear in you. Peter was afraid of the, the wind because the wind became a little big, um, much. He was afraid. Adam here was afraid of being naked. Like the kind of fear that don't make no sense. Even you now begin to think, all of you, type the people that are afraid. What are you afraid of? Type it. Let us see. I want to read some of your comments. Just type it. Some people are afraid of death. Some people are afraid of whatever. They're afraid of not being able to, to survive. Some people are afraid of not being, like, afraid of getting fired. Some people are afraid of um, relationships. Some people are afraid of dark. Some people are afraid of demons. Some people are afraid of... What are you afraid of? Tell us. Tell us. What are you afraid of? Some people, I know some people that they can't sleep. There was one guy I prayed for. He said for two years, he hasn't had a good sleep. He's always afraid to close his eyes. Because the moment he closes his eyes, he starts to see things. People start to chase him. Some people are afraid that they will be, like if they want to start a business, they are afraid that they may, they may not do well in the business, they will fail. Like they're already afraid of failure before they even start the business. They're like, I don't want to, I don't want to fail. Some people are afraid of, oh, breast cancer. I hear a lot of people getting it. Oh, please, I'm afraid of breast cancer. Before you know, breast cancer is coming. See, when, you, when the devil knows you're afraid of something, it is that thing that he will come and... <laughs> oh, you don't understand this devil, look. When he sees that you're afraid of something, it's that thing that he will come and use to get you. You're afraid of getting one kind of sickness. Suddenly, you start having that sickness. Because you're afraid of it, and he now knows that that's where he will get you. See, a lot of people say they're afraid of failing. You see what I'm saying? Fear of poverty. Fear of death. Can you imagine? Some people, if they even tell you their own fear, you will laugh. You'll be like, like, seriously, you're afraid of that? Yes. Some people are afraid of some things that you, you will be like, uh, even my son is not afraid of that. How can you be afraid of that? You're a grown-up person. And they would think it's normal to be afraid of that thing. And people are laughing at them like, girl, are you really afraid of that stuff? Yes, I'm really afraid. You don't know. Oh, I'm afraid of, I'm afraid. I'm, take it away from me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Somebody say fear of disappointment. Fear of snake. Fear of failure. Somebody said, I'm fear of, I'm afraid of evil spirit. Somebody says she's afraid of, for her life. Can you imagine? Are you guys reading their comments? Somebody is afraid of frogs. Natalia Macy, she says she's afraid of frogs. Frogs that me, I can just fling one time. That's what I'm saying. Somebody's fear. You will laugh over it. Like Adam's fear is nakedness. And you'll be like, Adam, what was Adam, what was Adam thinking? Why would he be afraid of nakedness? I'm seeing people say they're afraid of frog. Frog. Frog that I can kill. Even without looking at them. Spiders. My son killed a spider yesterday. And somebody, a grown up is afraid of it. Pastor Adesheye Omole, God bless you sir. He posted Job 3.25. For what I fear comes upon me. And what I dread befalls me. You see what I'm saying? When you're afraid of something... The devil will use that thing to come get you. The devil will use that to come get you. So if you know you're afraid of frogs, <laughs> one day you want to pray, maybe you start hearing frog, or <laughs> one day you want to pray from nowhere, a frog will just pop up from nowhere. <laughs> you will know that there's no frog in that area, but that day that you really want to do serious prayer, maybe you're alone in the house, you will just see a frog pop up in your house from nowhere. And you will not be able to catch it. It will run under the couch or somewhere. And because that frog is in that house that whole day, you will not be able to pray because you are afraid that a frog may just pop out and bite you. So he will do the things that scare you. If you're afraid of voices, you hear voices. Oh, you're going to be hearing a lot of voices. <laughs> that thing you're afraid of, it will start happening a lot. It will start happening a lot. You're afraid of being broke. You're going to be broke a lot. You're afraid that you can't pay your rent. Oh, you're going to struggle a lot to pay your rent. You're afraid of being heartbroken. Every man that comes to you will break your heart. 
The devil uses the things that will pain you to get you. I'm serious. Once he knows what you are afraid of, he will use it to get you down. That's your weakness. So he will use your weakness. That's why Jesus Christ says, I have given you power. Because that power, the Holy Spirit, it helps you even in your weaknesses. It helps you. That fear, he helps you deal with that fear. Stop being afraid. It's not of God. It's not of God. Sometimes... There was one man that was telling me this story. It's kind of funny, but you know, he, he follows me and he wanted me to pray. I prayed for him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost, you know. And one day he was saying that like he's always afraid of not afraid of anything, but afraid of he's afraid of an he wants to have an encounter with Jesus. But he's, he's afraid of the encounter. You understand what I mean? Like one day God was telling me to tell you guys that he wants to, he, he, he wants to have an encounter with you guys. Like, but you are still afraid and God doesn't know how to scare people. So if you say, Oh Lord, I want to see angels, but deep down in your heart, you are afraid. You can't handle it. If you see them, he's not going to show you angels because that, God doesn't do things to scare his children. Just like this rain that you guys see on my videos. Since I've been preaching, there's been rain on my video. But gradually, he started opening some of your eyes to see the rain. You didn't start seeing it like the first day I started to preach. But it's always been there. The angels that some of you see in my video, they've always been there. But God did not just open your eyes to it. You have to grow into it. Do you understand what I mean? You have to grow into it. So this man, he kept saying that he wants to feel the presence of God, right? So one day he told me, this is so funny, but I have to, I have to tell you guys. <laughs> he, so he was praying in his closet. <laughs> fear is, fear is wicked. <laughs> the devil is wicked. Fear. So he now said, uh, Jesus, he was praying. He now said, Jesus, I want, I want, I want to feel your presence. Jesus, father, Lord, I want to feel your presence. I want to feel your presence. You know, he's praying to feel the presence of God. But deep down in his heart, he's afraid. <laughs> he was like, I want to feel your presence, Lord. And suddenly, he said, it's like he felt somebody in the room. And you know what this man did? He left his phone and his Bible and he ran out of the room. <laughs> The one that invited Jesus, so he started feeling something like there was somebody in the room. He left his phone, he left his Bible, he ran out of that place real quick. <laughs> How can you be afraid and you want to have an encounter with Jesus? <laughs> this is a man, this is not a baby, <laughs> this is a grown up man. <laughs> when he was telling me this, and I was, I was laughing, he said, He was like, Lord Jesus. I want you, I want your, come and be with me. I want your presence. And suddenly it's like, it felt like somebody was there. He left his phone, his Bible. Man, he ran out of that place quick, quick, quick. <laughs> I don't know what he's afraid of. He's, af he's afraid of, maybe he really, maybe he's not really ready to see Jesus yet. <laughs> Some of you are like that. I want to have an encounter, Lord. And suddenly, <laughs> you hear one thing, you run. He said the second time, he was praying, I think, in his children's room or something. And he said, Holy Spirit, take over right now. Holy Spirit, take over right now. Holy Spirit, come and be with me here. Holy Spirit, do this. And he said, suddenly, he heard noise where his children's toys were. <laughs> He heard noise where his children's toys were. He shouted and started calling his wife and ran out of that room. He said, hey, hey, hey I hear something. No. 
maybe you know maybe like a toy was probably on top of another toy or something but he heard you know when toys make noise the man left he didn't even take his bible or his phone with him he ran out of that place real quick you are afraid of the holy ghost encounter you are afraid of jesus <laughs> do you see what i'm saying the devil will be somewhere laughing at this man <laughs> And God is like, I want to show this man things. I want to have an encounter with him. But he's not ready yet. That spirit of fear has to leave him before I can appear to him. Before I can show him. That's why some of you, you want to see angels. Uh -uh. You have not seen it because the day you may see one angel, you may shout, hey! They have come. Oh. <laughs> they have come. Oh. <laughs> Hey, they have come on. Oh, hey. <laughs> and most of the time, when we have such encounters, we are so numb, like we can't move. Like most times when I see angels in my room, I am numb. When I have some really, really deep encounter, I am numb from the only thing that is moving is my eyes. My whole body is like I am paralyzed. I can't move. Because maybe God knows that if we can move, we will run and go kill ourselves. <laughs> he heard noise where his children's toys were. And he ran. Some of you are like that. You're laughing, but this is a true story for you. You will be speaking in tongues. Like somebody messaged me yesterday. A guy that speaks in tongues now, filled with the Holy Ghost surprisingly he sent me a message he said woman of God please pray for me for the spirit of fear that when he's praying sometimes or worshipping he starts getting afraid I was like that's not right you have the Holy Ghost why are you afraid because you know how the spirit of God like me sometimes when I'm in the, when I'm lost in, the, in his presence you see me closing my eyes sometimes let me tell you my encounters could be so deep I actually feel like somebody's holding my hand I feel different kind of body movements and stuff but I'm in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, you, you're not conscious of things happening around. But if you're in the spirit and one eye is like this, like you see, you're in the spirit, but you're looking around to see. <laughs> you're not ready. Yo. You are you're in the spirit, oh, but you're opening eye once in a while. You're trying to see if there's something. You ain't ready for an encounter yet. That's the devil. He doesn't want you. He sees how close you are to getting that encounter that you're praying for. He's going to do anything possible for that encounter not to happen. He will do anything possible for that encounter not to happen. I am telling you, how can a grown-up man be praying in his closet, asking Jesus to take over him, and then he runs out when he starts to feel the presence of somebody in there? We are laughing, but a lot of people go through stuff like this. They are worshipping and they are lost in the present, but their eye is open to see if maybe one spirit will just come and slap them or something. I don't know what they are even looking for. It's the devil. It's not right. It's not right. Do you know it's even a sin to be afraid? One day I was reading the book of Revelation. Oh, when I saw the scripture... It actually scared me. Revelation 21 verse 8. It says, but the fearful. That was the first thing. They're fearful. It says, but the fearful. Listen to this. Somebody should post it, please. But the fearful. Revelation 21 verse 8. King James Version. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death but the first thing that was listed there was but the fearful but the fearful so the one that is always fearful shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. I was like, wow. So is that serious? Wow. So is that serious? Because in a way, it's kind of like an insult to God. God is giving you power to do all these things. And you are afraid. It's like you don't even trust the power. That's what happened. That's why Jesus was asking Peter, why did you doubt? 
He said, why did you doubt? God bless you, Andrea. He said, why did you doubt? Like he was feeling somehow like I told you to come and you doubted. Why? So it's like an insult to Jesus. I gave you power to do this and you are afraid. Why? Meaning you don't believe in the power that I just gave you. Do you understand what I mean? But the fearful, it came before any of it. Unbelieving, abominable, murderous. He said, but the fearful, when I saw that part, I was like, wow. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Do you see how far it goes? But the fearful. Are you fearful? Isaiah 41 verse 10. One of my favorite scriptures. It says fear thou not. Meaning fear not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah. I will help thee. Yeah. I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. You guys know the scripture. It says fear thou not. Before he said anything, he said, fear not. Even, even the disciples, when they were thinking they saw a spirit, he said, fear not, it is I. Don't be afraid. He removed that fear from their mind. Before one of them was bold enough to say, can I come if this is you? He's always telling people, don't be afraid. Because the devil, when he comes, he comes with fear. Even the devil prophets, people that prophesy on behalf of the devil, that you would think they are from God. See, any man of God, any woman of God that preaches to you and puts fear in you is not of God. Simple and short. See, there was one guy that I was praying for. This guy is from um, somewhere in Africa. And one day, he messaged me. He said for two years, he hasn't been able to turn to the right or turn to the left. His neck is just, you know, he has a stiff neck. Um, like there's no bone in his neck anymore. He uses his hand to support his neck. It's an attack. He said he never sleeps at night. He's always scared to sleep because they attack him. And now his neck, he has not been able to look like this or look like this. He always looks right, but his hand must support his neck. You know, I pray for some things that if I tell you, you will not believe these things. So I was led to call him on messenger. That was the first, first time I started preaching, which is a few months ago. And I started to pray for him on the phone. And that day, I was alone in the house. But when I started to pray for him, my voice changed. It's like the power in me, like the Holy Spirit was like, about time you brought a case like this for me to pray on. Like, you know how we, we pray, we say, be healed of headache, be healed of pain. This case was serious. This had like a community of witches trying to destroy this guy it wasn't one witch it wasn't 20 witches it was a lot of witches they messed up his neck his hand could not come off his neck if one hand comes off another hand is on it to support the neck it had no bone supporting it so when i started to pray man it was so powerful even the voice changed it was so deep that came out of me this step, when I step one step, the whole house was shaking. I could feel, I could feel war going on. Like there was war. It wasn't a small deliverance. And suddenly, he started to speak in tongues for the first time because he had to repent before we did that kind of deliverance. Started to speak in tongues for the first time. God even told me he would be a pastor. You know, when you're about to be like a pastor or a man of God or somebody. The devil fights, 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 trying to kill you so you don't come to your destiny. So you don't fulfill your destiny. So you waste away. So you die before your time. See, when you are having too much attacks in your life, trust me, God has a good plan for you somewhere. Maybe you are supposed to be someone that will save so many people or someone that will impact lives. So the devil will keep coming to attack you. Look at your life. Are you always attacked from here and there and there? You have somebody. That's why they're attacking you like that. You better believe that. They did that to me too. So when I finished praying for the guy, immediately he started to feel heat around his neck. The Holy Spirit started working on him. And he was able to, do, to remove his hand from his neck for the first time ever. After almost two years of not leaving his neck without supporting it with his hand. Like he was able to leave his neck alone without any hand supporting it. And he could feel fire around his neck. 
So God was working on this guy. He started to watch my videos. His spiritual life became like better. You know, he was always reading the Bible. He was speaking in tongues for hours. The devil saw how strong he was getting, right? And guess what they did to him? He's from um, this country, Cameroon, right? And one time they had something going on in the country. And they did not have um, Wi-Fi for a while. Like they, I think they disconnected their Wi-Fi. So a lot of them could not come on Facebook. They couldn't, they didn't have internet access. So he called me one day on phone because he couldn't watch my videos no more. He couldn't come online. He couldn't come online. So he called me one day. He said, woman of God, please, I need to talk to you. I am, I am, something is happening to me, woman of God. I said, what? Because I was surprised. This is the man that is always telling me how he sees. Before before I started praying for him, he said he used to always be chased in a dream. He never looked forward to sleeping. But these days, he said once he killed a serpent in his dream, these days he keeps killing things in his dream. He's no longer afraid. He's no longer running. Because you know when, he, when you're no longer afraid in real life, it also enters your spirit, your dreams. But if you're afraid in real life, you're going to be afraid in your dream too. You understand what I mean? So now he was like a champion killing these things in his dream too. But that day when he called, he called like someone that was so troubled. I said, what's going on? He said, um, princess, I really need your help. I said, why? What's happening? He said, you know, for two weeks, I haven't been able to watch your videos. And um, I've been kind of miserable because I, I can't come on Facebook. We don't have internet right now. And that's why I'm calling you right now. He said, but um, a prophetess, a prophetess um, came to prophesy to him. And she said that the reason the person behind all these things that he's going through is a lady that he used to date years ago that he was supposed to marry, but he didn't marry the lady. He, he, he left the lady and the lady is a, is a, is a, is a, is a witch or she's uh, a strong witch. And the prophetess said that he should be afraid of the lady. Because the lady is very, very powerful. This is what he kept saying. That the woman is very, very powerful. That the, the, the prophetess was telling him, be afraid of her. She's very powerful. Very, very powerful. That she says she will deal with you. She will not stop until she kills you. You need to be afraid. Be, you, you should be afraid. She's not a regular witch. She's a powerful witch. I said, the message was not entering me well. I was getting upset in my spirit. I said, wait, you said this was a woman of God telling you this? He said, yes. I said, a prophetess, he said, yes. Immediately, I knew that that prophetess was a prophetess of the devil. She wasn't a prophetess of God. Because she put fear in this guy. She said, you need to be afraid. Because this woman is very powerful. She kept using the word very, very powerful. I now said, you know what? I'm getting upset in my spirit. I said, wait, did she give you scriptures? He said, no. I said, did she pray for you? He said, no. I said, what did she come to do? She just came to prophesy to him and put fear in you and leave you like that. He said, yes. I said, so can't you see something is not right? How can you come and give me this kind of prophecy? And you are not praying with me to destroy this, this witch or whatever. You are not giving me scriptures to read, to build up my faith or whatever. Instead, you are telling me to be afraid that this woman, 